Hello, everyone. It's episode 378 of the official podcast. It's Jackson. I'm a converted man. I've been to Taylor Swift. I've seen the errors to her, and it's it's like seeing Jesus for the first time. I've found faith. I'm I'm I, I am a changed man. It was a fantastic experience. If you guys want to ask me any questions about it, I'm here to answer them. Now let's just move on. Okay. No, I'm kidding, Jackson. How was it? Did you actually have fun? Yeah, I, I actually had a lot of fun. I, I think it's impossible to have like no fun at a concert with that, those kinds of vibes and stuff, like that kind of raw energy. You have to be like a real stick in the mud to go there and not at least wag your finger at the songs when there's just so much like, <laughs> you know, energy in the stadium. It was crazy. It was like an enormous crowd, 100,000 people, which I don't know if that's enormous compared to like the American stadiums and whatever, but it's pretty fucking big for Australia. It was like the most people I've seen in one place. And the music was fun. Yeah. Was the demographic as expected? Like, was it younger girls or was it kind oh, of no, a mix no. of everybody? I would say it was 80% single men for some reason. It was <laughs> really? <all> us. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> it was all, uh, it was, it was like, I think I said to Kai, yes, it was like 50% like uh, young girls, 30% older girls, like 10% gay dudes, and then 10% like men dragged along by their girlfriends as well. Hmm. Or just men in general. Which one are you? It was like 80%, 80 uh, women. I don't know. I fit, I, I'm fluid. I fit across the, the spectrum. I can't be held down yeah. into any one category. He's swifty fluid, yeah. <laughs> the new gender mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun it was it was like i was like actually like super impressed at the raw level of i, I don't know if talent yeah talent dedication shown by taylor swift i was expecting her to like uh just half ass it basically but she was up there for three and a half hours uh seeing her guts out dancing doing all this fucking chaotic shit uh going out of the way to put on a good show there was like no breaks or anything, no intermission. Three and a half hours of just pure singing. She does. She does like. Doesn't that get old? No, it didn't. It was. It, it was oh. incredible. Uh, it was like she did. I think forty eight songs. The track list was like 48, 48 Jesus. songs. I don't know. I don't That's know. That's actually you do an that. outrageous amount of songs to be singing. Usually concerts, or like, at least the ones I've been to, are like two hours tops of tracks. Yeah, another, another hour on top of that's pretty brutal. Yeah, and they're pretty li- like liberal with how often like they you know vamp or whatever. Usually, in con- other concerts I've been to, like there's a lot of downtime in between tracks sometimes. But this one was like it was just three and a half hours. Like she does, it, she, so she the concert it consists of like all of her different eras. It's the eras tour, so she does all of her all of her albums basically, like the best songs from each album. And in between albums, there's a quick costume change, so she'll she'll go to like a a point in the stage and she'll fucking like get teleported below the stage and run off and do a quick costume change. But then she's out within like two minutes with a con- like a costume change. It was insane. This is something I ha- I don't have I haven't found an answer to, but I haven't looked that hard. Admittedly, does she have an opening act before she comes out, or is it just her? mm Hmm. Who's her opening act? So I think it's different uh, in in Australia compared to the other places, but f- over here it was Sabrina Carpenter. Oh, okay. So it's equally large names. Oh yeah, she's she's massive. Okay. And I was kind of my girlfriend was excited to see her, and so was I, kind of. Um, but there was lightning in the area like before the concert started, so they kicked us out of the stadium once we got in. Like they evacuated the stadium because there was lightning in the area. <laughs> they didn't want us to get zapped, so <laughs> the opening act got cancelled. Like she couldn't uh, come out. I mean, wouldn't you get zapped out of side of the? Stadium too. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, what, what the fuck is moving us out <laughs> well, of the stadium? It's, it's then no longer their liability. They didn't yeah, put you yeah, in there. Yeah. It's like a lightning rod. They don't have so to they... clean you up. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna get struck by lightning, let it be outside. Admittedly, I'd miss you, but it would be so funny if Jackson, <laughs> Jackson gets yeah. struck by lightning at a fucking Taylor Swift concert of all places. If one of us is going to die, it needs to be in a huge, over-the-top fashion. I don't want no fucking, like, cardiac arrest in your sleep. I want Jackson to be water skiing and a shark, like, snaps him in half or something. So, Jackson, you should have stayed yeah. in the stadium. You should have ignored all the warnings. I wanted to. They kicked yeah. us all out. It would have been, yeah, it would have been so fucking, like, imagine the odds of me getting hit by lightning in a crowd of, like, 100,000. 
It would have been so good. But yeah, the performance was fantastic. Girlfriend absolutely loved it. She she was very happy with it. So was I. I, I would go back. It was that much fun. It's just really? it's hard. Was not there to any like, crying? Cry- oh yes, Jesus Christ! The the uh, yeah, there were people. There were people crying in the in the stadium in the chairs and stuff. People, the the, the outside of the stadium during the concert, like I've seen videos. Uh, there were just groups of people outside just listening to the music from outside the stadium like hundreds of uh, like probably thousands of people just trying to like listen from the outside and i'm sure you've seen the video kaya i think i showed it to you yesterday yeah. uh like a like 22 year old woman like outside and she can hear taylor swift playing a song from inside and she just bursts into tears and starts crying and sobbing directly into the camera crying about how it changed As, like her, her life. friends are laughing yeah They're, like, stifling like- their laughter at her it's like Jesus yeah, Christ. He goes Becky again. Yeah, dude, it's a religious experience. Do you have a favorite song that she performed, Jackson? Uh, no, because I, I well, I went in like kind of blind to her music. Like I had heard all the popular tracks or whatever, but it's not like I could like place the name to them or anything. I've just heard them. I think my favorite era is Reputation, though. That's the Snake one. If anyone mm-hmm. uh, is familiar, they're they're kind Nerd. of like fun songs. <laughs> but I, I think, I think my favorite's "Midnight Rain." If I had to choose a specific song, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna give it some more thought. What about you, Charlie? I feel like if anyone here was to like Taylor Swift now, same as me, it would be you. I do like Taylor Swift. I think the song I would be most hyped to hear her sing in person would probably be "Wildest Dream." Oh, did yeah. she do that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. She did. Okay, I used to really like that song. Yeah, it's good. It's all good. She, she, her, the choreography and stuff is insane. Like she doesn't half ass it. She's not just standing there with a the guitar. It's like a whole. It's like a. It's like a whole show. There's like a thousand backup dancers, and just insane set design and stuff like that. She pulled. She during her folklore, whatever folk folklore era, like a, an entire log cabin is wheeled out, wheel, wheeled out onto the stage, and she sings on the roof. <laughs> That's of it. fucking awesome! Holy shit! That is I so know. fucking cool. <laughs> They need to integrate like skits and shit into it. Like they have like the birth of Jesus or something, and then Taylor <laughs> Swift comes out like as one of the she pops like out, one of the yeah. singers or something, one of the wise men. She starts <laughs> performing Shakespeare. That would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be so fucking cool. And now my next song is a reading of the entire play of Hamlet from start to finish. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Does she still do any country at all? I'm guessing not. No, um, like, so she plays from every era, but it definitely seems like the first few uh, albums are kind of like glossed over very quickly. Yeah. I think there was like three songs max from those eras. So yeah, pro- not really. I didn't hear, I don't remember any country. I'm pretty sure her very first album was just straight up country, like not really even pop yeah. music. Yeah, it was. I feel like each of her albums have really had a very different vibe each time like there was the country then reputation was like the very like fun pop and then like folklore and stuff was like guitar indie music and stuff like that it's it's changed a lot but um yeah i'm trying to think of other things so there were like fireworks and stuff like giant fireworks at the end of the giant flamethrower like uh pyrotechnics that you could feel the heat of everywhere the lighting was insane I don't know. I, it was worth the money. I'd highly recommend you guys go see it yourself. Honestly. I always like Life changing. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't... I, I'm surprised you didn't go when it was in America. I did. Uh, I told you that. I went to the... Uh, when she was in Tampa for the Eras tour, I went, but I was outside doing portraits for the fans. I was just giving away Yeah, I know that. That's, that's, very, that's very different. <laughs> that you were just one of the girls outside crying on her video camera. That's it. Yeah, th- that was me, except I was giving art to people like her. <laughs> yeah, it's different. I'll tell you this, uh, the amount of like cultish celebrity worship, though, still definitely like creeps me out. Like Travis Kelsey walked through the stadium to get to like the, um. well, he didn't walk through the stadium. He was very guarded. He went through like a tunnel, but people saw like a glimpse of his head and there were people like screaming and freaking out and crying and stuff like that over That's just her seeing boyfriend, her boyfriend. Right? Yeah, her boyfriend. Yeah. 
It was like, Jesus fucking Christ. So over the top. How long is that going to last? Again, with somebody like this, I always wonder, like, hmm, which writer is responsible for this love arc right now? Because they're going <laughs> to yeah. break up before her next album, right? So she can write yeah, another she, eight songs. She about needs her new breakup. music. Yeah. She did. A, she did announce her new album, though. She put it up on screen, and people people were like fucking going crazy over that. So that's oh, exciting. That must have been massive. Poor Kelsey. I couldn't hear after the concert. The screaming and stuff was so fucking loud. Like, so much louder than any other concert I've ever been to. Could you hear the music properly, or was it mostly just screaming? I could barely hear Taylor Swift during some songs It was that loud. <laughs> oh man, you got Beatles. How far were you to the stage? We were, we were really close. Like, we weren't on the floor, um, but we were, like, very close. I don't know how to describe it. Close enough. Yeah. Well, next time you know to wear it, your protection. Yeah, I probably should have, but I didn't want to be a nerd. <laughs> I, I actually really, I would, I would have no respect for you if you wore ear protection to the concert. Yeah, I, know. I do, I know. and I don't give a shit. No, you should, you should, like, yeah. you could do really bad permanent damage to your ears, but you do feel like such a fucking nerd putting on, like, yeah, ear protection I mean, in a concert. Yeah, but I mean, they can be discreet. You can just get like earplugs or something. Yeah. There's, they have the special kind of earplugs where they only lower the volume by a certain decibel amount that you can choose. Oh, I, I do it all the I time. I don't know how many like, like noise canceling headphones. I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want thousands of like teenage girls screeching in my ear. I feel yeah. like for three and a half hours, that would be a bit too much. I go to metal shows pretty regularly, so they're loud as fuck, but I like to get as close as I can to watch the band play. So I just wear earplugs and I'm super comfortable and I watch the show and it's totally fine. And you hear the whole nerd. thing. Nerd. Yeah. And then the whole nerd. crowd points at me and they go, nerd. <laughs> nerd. And then the lead singer, every, I don't know why the fuck this happens, but the lead singer every time goes, wait, 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 guys, stop, stop, stop. That guy's wearing earplugs. And they all just laugh and at And then me. everybody wedgies you. Yeah. <laughs> they give me pink bellies and Indian burns. It sucks. I hate them. But that doesn't matter because you can't tell because you're wearing earphones. Yeah, I, I don't know that I'm in pain. I can't hear it. <laughs> He's wearing his meta headset. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> VR in the middle of the concert. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like in a log cabin or like a relaxing area in the metaverse. I'm watching all their up. digital avatars. Is she in Fortnite yet? Oh, yeah. She's actually not. I think yeah. she's in the rhythm game, isn't she? I well, her music is, but she, yeah. I don't think she has a skin. Let me see. No. Yeah. Well, okay. there is rumors. Taylor Swift may be coming to Fortnite, hmm. but she's currently I'm, not. I'm sure the rumor is like, she's a celebrity and popular. She might be coming to Fortnite. Like, well, Ariana Grande is coming to Fortnite. It's got to be the price, right? They must be haggling like, okay, how much will it take Mr. Uh, Taylor Swift's agent, sir? And he goes, uh, two Epic Games is worth. And I guess they yeah. can't afford it. I don't fucking know. Hundred million dollars. Jesus Christ. Imagine getting that kind of money just to be put into a video game. Just like being paid f yeah. millions of dollars just, just pure for your likeness. likeness to be in a video game. Pure likeness. It's free right, money. Uh, rights costing that much is kind of unfathomable. But here we are. There was a, like, how much would you guys sell your likeness for? Would you take any money? Well, if someone offered me six point yeah, eight mean, billion dollars, I'd probably do it, but I'd have to think about it. I don't know, you know. <laughs> well, it depends. Also, what are you putting me into? You yeah. don't get to know. You don't get to know. You just offered a mm, certain amount of no. money. No, see, okay, that's sussy. Because, like, if you said, Kaya, can I put you in my game as like a self-insert? I'd go, yeah, sure. But if I don't know, some shady fucking NFT company did that, I'd be like, uh, uh I wouldn't want that. True, true. I always forget about NFTs. Yeah. Everyone does. Totally. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I totally forgot they were a thing until yesterday. I t took my wife to the movies to see The Beekeeper, <laughs> Jason Statham, and the bad guys. This <laughs> like fuckboy millionaire who just sells NFTs and Bitcoin and basically swindles old people out of their money. And I was like, oh, damn, yeah, Bitcoin is a thing still. And NFTs. Have any of you guys seen that movie? No, no but I've seen the trailer. 
Um, you guys gotta go see it. It's fucking fun. It's classic Jason Statham, and it doesn't take itself seriously. So he just goes around saying shit like, "Yeah, buzz, buzz, motherfucker, I'm the beekeeper." Sometimes society needs to smoke out the hornets, and then he just kicks ass, and it's so fucking silly. That actually sounds like the perfect movie. Holy shit! It is. It's just it's classic Statham. It's the same thing every time. Mm-hmm. Fuck, that but he still cool. serves just like Taylor. I saw the trailer. He's the, the the main enemies are like call centers that are like preying on old women, yes. right? Because he has an old woman friend that yes. dies or something. <laughs> yeah, he he keeps bees, and his neighbor is an old, like a nice old lady who invites him to dinner. But just before dinner, she gets swindled. She, you see, she gets a, a virus on her computer, like malware. So she calls the company to be like, hey, why do I have a virus on my computer? And they say, okay, just transfer us $2 million. And she does, basically. I mean, that's the gist of it. It's kind of longer, but she immediately kills herself. Spoiler alert. She doesn't even call the bank for like fraud detection or reversing the transaction or anything. She immediately blows her fucking brains out. What the food still on the stuff? Why did she ask the beekeeper? I can't believe the hackers were able to get that money from her on Google Play cards. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> and that's the setup. That's like the motivation for the beekeeper. Jason Statham, like he gets mad. Oh, that old lady, she was going to make me food, but now she's dead because she got swindled by the NFT bros. And it's like, at the end, my wife and I, we were looking at each other like they didn't have to kill that lady. They could have just left it at they stole her life savings. But no, she had to fucking <laughs> kill herself for some reason. <laughs> the, uh, the other main character is this like um, fat detective lady. And she doesn't contribute anything to the movie except uh, she gets in Jason Statham's way from time to time for no fucking reason. Even though he's literally hunting down the people that made her mom kill herself, which makes no sense at all. But anyway, it's still a fun movie because, like, at the end, by the end, um, spoiler alert, J Jason Statham ha is like, he hints that he's going to be the Queen Slayer Bee and he's going to slay the Queen Bee, which is the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Are you kidding me? I actually, when, when we were watching the trailer, I made the joke to my girlfriend. I was like, oh, this call center scam probably goes all the way to the top because it seems so fucking like insane. <laughs> it is. I actually yeah. made the joke that it, it goes all the way to the top to the president. It actually does. The president's in on the call. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I kind of, I feel more comfortable spoiling this because it's just such a silly fucking movie that you're not going to care about the plot at all. But it's still a lot of fun. And yeah, the bad guy is literally just, uh, he's the president's son and he's just this fuck boy. I guess that's the only way to put it. He's like a tech Silicon Valley douche who just sells people fake NFTs and swindles them out of their savings. <laughs> Wait, so now he's killing the president just because his son was a bad guy? <laughs> well, okay, so they explain it in the movie. So Jason Statham is the beekeeper. And they tried to set up this whole universe of... They're trying to do like a John Wick where the beekeepers are what keeps society in line, just like a beehive. Sometimes a bee has to rise up to keep the hive in order. And that's Jason Statham. Is He's the beekeeper. Yeah, that's and what bees are known for. They're having yeah, like a rogue right. agent that takes out the queen sometimes. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, they explain that in a hive, sometimes a bee will rise up if the queen has um, like bad offspring or like, I don't know crippled offspring or something bad so one of the bees will <laughs> rise up and slay the queen and that bee is known as the queen slayer and that's jason statham you, sir that like the fat detective lady the fbi lady is actually explaining it to her superior at some point like sir we think uh the beekeeper may be going for the president because he considers himself the queen slayer <laughs> and by the end he doesn't by the way it's just it's fucking silly is it, it set up for dumb, a sequel um, I mean, they could probably, yeah, the beekeeper to be harder. I don't know, but <laughs> it's just Jason Statham doing Jason Statham stuff, just kicking ass and kicking people, which is fun to watch. Uh, so highly it, recommend it. It's still in the movies. It is a real thing. So it looks like sometimes worker bees kill their queen. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Fuck, that's cool. What is, what is, what's the condition for that? Like, when do they uh, know to... <laughs> Do mutiny. I don't know, but it, it's a, it, this seems so <laughs> hardcore. So, like, the article I'm reading it is A Game of Drones, Why Some Bees Kill Their Queens. Research shows stingless bees will assassinate their queen if she makes the wrong royal match. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like, 
some bees reading the paper about how his fucking queen is like betrothed <laughs> to the wrong person. He's like, I gotta take this into my own hands. And he goes <laughs> and put- kills her and then like drags her through the streets of Bee like, Kingdom or whatever. He goes back to his like- home in the in the honeycomb and he gets out his weapons. He's like, it's time to go back to my old ways. <laughs> I really like the queen of the, dr- uh, what was it? Game of Drones. That's clever. Yeah, Game of Drones is pretty clever. And yeah, in the movie, so... It's the classic John Wick thing. You know how in the first one, Vigo? Was it Vigo? Like where John is coming after the guy's kid. And the guy's like, yeah. you fucked up. If John's coming after you, there's no stopping him. Go to your room. I'm going to hire like Navy SEALs to protect you. It's that same deal, except I just keep using the word beekeeper, which makes us all like everybody in the movie theater was like snickering because the guy's like, if a beekeeper is coming after you, you better make funeral arrangements. <laughs> and then he hires a bunch of like retired Navy SEALs to protect the son. And he talks to them and says, compared to a beekeeper, all of you are pussies. He's going to barrel through all of you. And then he does. I think he actually breaks into the White House at the end. No, it wasn't the White so, House. So wait, so wait, what? So a beekeepers like uh, are they like a? I don't know what you would call it. Like are they a SWAT agency or like a? Yeah. They, so it's an organization. Yeah, they like, like so, Navy, Navy yeah. SEAL suits. They are outside the law technically. So even the FBI and CIA don't know about them, but they exist and technically they're the good guys. They're like they. They're supposed to exist outside of the system to keep the system going. The hive, okay, as they say. And they're known, and, and they're they have, actually known as as beekeepers. So they're called beekeepers. Yes, I mean that's like then a why the fuck but he wait, does actually keep why, bees. Why, yeah, why, that's what I was gonna <laughs> say. Like why, does he keep, why does he actually keep bees? <laughs> like, why is he an actual beekeeper? I don't know. It's never <laughs> explained. He just likes bees. And he makes honey and he takes people out with his fucking honey jars like Winnie the fucking Pooh. And then, um, <laughs> they, yeah, they explain like one of the Navy SEAL guys actually goes, well, if he's like technically one of the good guys, can't just somebody call him and like tell him to stand down and stop killing people? And they go, no, because, you know, he, uh, the beekeepers, they have infinite resources and they have total carte blanche. They get to infinite make their resources. own decisions. It's like, Jesus Christ. Okay, so he technically sits above the fucking president then in the <laughs> yeah, chain of do you, hierarchy, doesn't he? What a <laughs> stupid decision to make some, like, really powerful dude outside of the uh, limits of control. So you're telling me that if the beekeeper <laughs> kills the president, everyone else is supposed to go, yep, it, it was the beekeeper, that's it, there's nothing to do. Well, just like Wrap they do in the high Andrew. You He's resetting the hive. On. This is good. This is what we needed. That guy, he was his approval ratings were down. They were at 40%. He deserved to be killed. We need a new one. Wait, wouldn't the presidents know about this as well? Wouldn't like the presidents know that there's beekeepers around? So they, they try harder to keep their approval rating higher so that they don't get assassinated by the beekeeper trying to keep them in line? Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is that her daughter, the president's, uh, sorry, not daughter, uh, her son is this NFT fuckboy who without her knowledge, she didn't know, but he ran this sleazy, scummy outlets where, you know, um, the call center, like Charlie said, where they just scam old people out of their money. And she finds out and she's like, the beekeeper will punish us for this. <laughs> it's like a religious like movie, man. man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The beekeepers are keeping Gotham safe. Yeah. This movie sounds That's incredible. What awesome. the fuck? It's fun to see Jason Statham still going. He He's actually, like, whatever he is in, it's usually decent to watch. Agreed. I agree. It's never, like, good acting or, like, an actually yeah. good movie, but it's mm-hmm. always, far, like, fun. I think the highest yeah. definition of that for sure is the Crank series. Both of those movies, they're not, oh, yeah, they're sure. not like stellar. They're not incredible, amazing, but for just action, dumb action, over the top bullshit, they're perfect. Yeah, but it's also. Yeah. Conceptually, though, I actually really like the Crank movies. I think they're very clever. I think mm-hmm. I, I love that idea of having to be like constantly fueled yeah. like, by adrenaline mm-hmm. to stay alive. I thought that was really good. Oh yeah, they're. I mean, they're they're really great movies. I've seen both of them. I think like three or four times, and they're just always exciting and entertaining. But at the same time, it's not Shakespeare. It's not like the the well, most, of course not. you know the most incredible mind altering film you've ever seen or anything. It would probably be worse if it was honestly. Yeah, true. Yeah, it doesn't take itself too seriously. That's what I like about Jason Statham movies is when he's in something that doesn't take itself too seriously. Like, the beekeeper Mm. doesn't. Which is why they liberally just have these silly fucking scenes where they just talk about the beekeeper like it's Baba Yaga. Mm -hmm. And Crank is like that, where, you know, by the end of the second movie, they have, like, an animatronic head 
like a decapitated head in a yeah, fish tank. Yeah, in a jar. Like the oh, most, man. The most dark shit fucking model they could have possibly dreamt. It, it looks so through fake. a fucking like 80s vocoder voice. <laughs> oh, that movie's so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's silly and it's fun. And the whole premise is, for those who don't know, in the Crank series, you should watch it. It's kind of dated at this point, but uh, Jason Statham is a hitman who gets poisoned. And the only antidote to the poison that's in the process of stopping his heart is that he needs to amp himself up constantly and he needs to do coke and keep his heart rate up and get adrenaline and just fucking get into fights constantly. Mm-hmm. And that's how he stays alive. And then in the second movie, they take his heart out and replace it with an artificial heart, which is cool as shit. That needs electromagnetic so stimulation. Himself. Oh, yeah, man. I, I don't recall. Does he sleep? It's been a long time since I've seen it. Does he ever sleep? No. In, in what? Like, like, can he Crank. sleep? There's a f- scene in the first movie where he's like no. falling asleep while driving a car and he's like, nope, can't do that. I'll fucking yeah. die. Oh, so he just can't sleep ever again in the series. Got it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not a very well, well thought no. out plot if you look at the details, but <laughs> doesn't he, doesn't he get the antidote antidote by the end of the first movie? No, he falls off a building and dies. <laughs> he falls out of a helicopter or out of a helicopter and lands sorry. on a car. Yeah. Yeah, he lands on a car and he's somehow still alive. His eyes shoot open yeah. and they're like, oh, he's still alive. And then Crank 2 happens. You know what really sticks with me about that movie is the scene where I don't remember how they get there. But his girlfriend is like leaving a bus and he's like, shit, I need adrenaline. So he fucks her in front of the bus as they watch and take oh, pictures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they up the ante in Crank 2 where he fucks her at a horse track and she gets turned on by looking at a horse's penis. Oh, oh God! What? You don't remember that scene? I I do I don't remember, remember that. that yeah, the horse. Yeah. Like, he fucks her in the middle of a horse trek, and the horse, yep. one of the race horses, actually jumps over her with like yep. an erect dick. Yeah, and, and she, she looks at him and it turns her on like, oh. just a little bit more, and she's like, "Wow, <laughs> <laughs> this movie's <laughs> kick ass." Sludge. I don't remember that at all. Crank Two is the movie where he's interrogating a guy, and he's like, "I need to know where they went," and he's like, "Fuck you!" So he greases up the barrel of a shotgun and shoves it up a guy's ass. It starts jiggling it oh, around. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's pretty cool too, man. It's been a while since I've seen these. Apparently, I've never. Se- I've, I've, I've never watched them many, them, many times. They know. used to be. They used to be my favorite movies of all time. I've seen them many times. Oh man, the other um, cool series, is, of course, is Transporter. The Transporter is Transporter oh, those were One, so Two, good. and yeah. Three. Yeah, yeah. God, and then they kicked them off, good. and they rebooted it with some other bald guy who just does not have the charisma of Jason Statham. I'm sorry, whoever that guy. Jason is, Jason Statham has like a crazy amount of charisma. I could mm-hmm. watch him even in his worst movies. He's just fun to watch. Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll get to that. But first, I have to talk about Mint Mobile. Just real quick, if you don't Ooh. mind. Please. Of On course. average, it takes about 30 days for a person to break their New Year's resolution. So if saving money was on your 2024 list, the odds for you are not looking that good. If you want a 100% guaranteed way to save money this year, switch to Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has wireless plans starting at $15 a month. That is unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. Kaya, you're on Mint Mobile, right? That's right. Yeah, that is a personal endorsement right there. You can check that off of your little checklist. You're going to be able to choose from three, six, or 12-month plans and say goodbye to a monthly phone bill. It's going to come on the nation's largest 5G network, give you all that unlimited stuff I told you about before. You get to use your own phone, keep your same phone, use your phone number, keep all your existing contacts. You don't need to change anything over except the actual phone plan to the wonderful folks at Mint Mobile. To get your new wireless plan for 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash official. That's mintmobile.com slash official. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash official. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Nice. Thank you. All right, Jackson. I have a I have a strong comment on what you just said. Could you repeat? What you said before the ad break, I want to make sure I heard you correctly. Uh, Jason Statham has so much charisma, I'd mm-hmm. be happy to watch him even in his worst movies. Oh, I have to butt in there. I'm sorry to tell you this. I went to a uh, restaurant recently, and on the TV, <laughs> they were playing Hobbs and Shaw. You guys oh, remember that Jesus movie? Christ. Yes. Yeah. That yeah. movie sucks. Um, 
ass. Oh. It was so bad. I, yeah, I was just I watching figured. it while eating my dinner, and it's just it was so really stupid and poorly edited and not exciting and just... Oh, I hated it. Oh, it was so fucked. Uh, oh, I mean, God. like, the writing of it's, like, bad and everything, but I thought the action was fun. It, it's the same kind of thing where it's just no. over the top, not too serious. But it's edited like a fifth grader. It's it's cut every half of a second, so you can't tell what's going on, and everything's just jarring hey, whoa, 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 whoa. all over the place. Okay, while you were doing the ad read, I went back and watched a couple crank scenes to remind myself. Uh, let's not pretend <laughs> that that was edited like a masterpiece. When he's having sex, there's like five cuts <laughs> to the right. tourists cheering him on. And that's while because... He's just having that's because the style of the movie is totally different. The style of Crank 2, for example, is like a music video. It's like constant random wacky zoom-ins and filters and sound effects and all this shit. Whereas Hobbs and Shaw is trying to play itself like a straight action movie. So when the cuts come in, it's just it feels like a poorly shot action scene. Whereas in Crank, Not it's really. supposed to be like disorienting and over the top and confusing. It's a difference well, between I mean, intention. Hobbs and Shaw is mm -hmm. this is no, Hobbs and Shaw's intentions is definitely more of like a over the top action film as well. They're like the fucking opening scene is the rock curling a fucking concrete table and then breaking out of jail together in like a like a almost operatic way. Like it's not meant to be super serious. I think the movie was boring, which is yeah. the biggest crime an action movie can be is like boring. I, 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 I think, think boring. Yeah, I, I think it's it a stupid, difference. I think it's a difference fun. of execution. Whereas Crank is like always high energy confusion filmmaking. Like Hobbs and Shaw has moments where they want to be really serious and dramatic, like when they reveal the main bad guy. And it, it just it didn't work, you know. It just didn't feel like it's not the same kind of movie, even though it's the same type of movie. You know what I mean? Yeah, actually, I kind of I I've never seen Crank, so I don't know if I can compare it to that in this way. But I definitely feel like Hobbs and Shaw like took itself seriously, like as with like all Fast and Furious movies, they like it's goofy, but I feel like the creators are like actually taking it seriously, mm -hmm. and and that's kind of sad. It's 50-50 in my eyes. When when Fast and the Furious is like launching cars off of cliffs with, cliffs with grappling hooks or when they're stealing bank vaults from the bank, that's dumb. That's stupid. They don't care. But then the other half of the movie is we're family and we do anything for each other and I love you so goddamn much and it would make me really sad if you died. And it's like, eh, okay, fine. Sure, Yeah, but Hobbs whatever. and Shaw doesn't do that. It's, it's the opposite for the most part. It's like, I'm better than you. No, I'm better and I'll prove it. And then, then I'm gonna be better than you by proving this. Like it's not, it's not the same thing. It just seems very over the top on purpose. It's lesser, but it's still there. There was, it still felt like there were those levels of like them trying to establish actual investment in the characters and what was going on. I, I guess what this could come down to is the crank movies are good and exciting, whereas the way this one was paced just felt boring and lifeless. Oh, well, Crank is much better. Yeah. No, no, no. Crank is a yeah. much better series for sure, but I'm, I don't think Hobbs and Shaw is awful or anything. It's the same style, just like an over-the-top, not-so-serious movie. No, you said you watched it at a restaurant. Was the sound on? Like, did you watch the whole movie? The subtitles were on, <laughs> which is good enough for me. <laughs> okay yeah to, to be fair okay. i didn't have the, i didn't really have sound but i did have subtitles so i knew what was going on and what was happening so mm. i i mm -hmm. i saw it in theaters with kira and i d i did not like it neither did she i found it very boring i wanted to leave early i was like really bored there you go it. jackson's on my team and Jeez. kaya where do you land um, I've never seen any of the Fast and... Well, maybe the first one before it turned You've into a You've never seen any flick. Fast and Furious movie Yeah, that's at surprising, all, actually. I think never? the first one, I, I... Just the first one, I think. But I don't even remember it, so not really, no. Wow. Hmm. No. It's not well, my thing. I don't really like cars. I'm not into cars at all, so it doesn't appeal it's to like me. It's like hardly about cars. Well, luckily, there's no cars left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just very surprised that the first one, the first one was such a huge hit and cultural shift back when it came out that you didn't at least check it out. I am shocked you wouldn't have seen that. I think I did see the first one. I just don't remember it at mm -hmm. all. Um, but no, everything else that Jason Statham has done with cars, I have seen like the transporter, which actually has a lot of fun uh, car chase scenes. Mm -hmm. That's a good movie or series, I suppose. For the people that have watched mm. Fast and Furious, which one do you think is the best one? Hmm. 
Probably the ride at Universal Studios is the best Fast and Furious oh, yes. experience. Yes. Yeah, I think that's the best experience you can ever have in the Fast and <laughs> yeah. Furious universe. I love that shit so fucking much. Yeah. God, it's, I, I love that ride. Discovering that and coming back and talking to you guys about it, and then you went like the following week yep. or whatever, or so, maybe a month later, and your lives were changed. It if you go so to Universal weird. Studios in Florida, there are two things that you have to do. They're mandatory. The Fast and the Furious ride and the Jimmy Fallon race through New York. They, they are just required. <laughs> They're the best parts, bar none. Is uh, is it still around? Oh yeah, I think it was. So, it's so good. It's just like a a very slow bus ride through <laughs> the Fast and Furious <laughs> universe. It's so good. They need a beekeeper ride. Mm-hmm. There's so much that <gasps> happens on that bus ride. It's so good. They should do a beekeeper ride. They're party buses. You got to get that right. And they're being driven by mannequins wearing afros. That's how you know they're legit. Why a party bus? Like, I, I get that they made it work in the story and stuff, but it's a Fast and Furious ride. Why not put us in, like, little cars or something, like, really fast? Because the ride used to be uh, Earthquake or something like that. Yeah. And the whole point, is, I think originally you were on the subway. And yep. which is funny because you don't have subways in Florida for the most part. Um, so you were on a train and then an earthquake would happen and all this like practical effects would go off. And it was like, wow, cool. So they just retrofitted it to be, oh, it's party buses now. And you're in Fast and the Furious land. And it's all digital screens. And they just took everything away. Yeah. Change the building. Oh, well, let's talk about a related topic to that, Jackson. You said that Jason Statham has the charisma to draw you to any movie. Do you, other boys, have an actor who just doesn't matter how good the movie is, you want to see him in it, he just makes you happy? Or she. Brendan Fraser. Anthony Hopkins. Say it every time. Anthony Hopkins, Anthony Hopkins? that's a good choice. Wow. Or a, I guess a unique choice. Like, Brendan yeah. Fraser's a good choice, too. I don't too. think that's a good choice. Anthony Hopkins is a, like, he's a good, he's good in some movies, like Silence of the Lambs, but he's also in Transformers, the new Transformers. One of the new Transformers. He's in Transformers? What the fuck is he doing in Transformers? <laughs> no, I meant, okay. That's bad. All right. I take it bad. Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, that guy is fun it's too no late. You already said it. He's oh, like, oh, he's in nothing but bad movies these days. Fuck, I feel so terrible Aww. for him. Did you like him in Death what Stranding? That's the important question. <laughs> he was good in Death Stranding, but man, did I not like him in Fantastic Beasts? <laughs> oh, true, he's in that. <laughs> or the Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Oh, no, Mads. I, I have seen neither of these. Okay, he's going through his mainstream actor arc then, which is rough. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it, it probably gets him a big payday, so I don't blame him. It's it Matt Mickelson and um, Christoph Waltz that I really, really like. The guy from Inglorious Bastards, the German. Mm, yeah. He's oh, yeah. Like what else guys. has he been in? Uh, he was the one in one of the Bond movies. He plays... Um, oh, he's also in Django. Guy. I forget. As well. Have you uh, have you guys seen The Hunt with Mad Mickelson? Yes. Isn't that the one where he gets accused of being a child molester? Yeah, he gets he gets yeah. falsely accused of being a child molester by. Uh, yeah, that a was a depressing school. fucking movie. I didn't like that. <laughs> I don't like, <laughs> I thought it was like great. watching actually depressing movies. I don't know. That was just no, but sad. It was, it was well made. It was like very engaging. No, it was well made. It, like as a movie, it was a good movie. I'm just saying, like by yeah, the end depressing. of it, you just feel depressed like well that sucks i feel i'm down now <laughs> <laughs> i'd kill myself what's mads mickelson still doing around <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was, but yeah the it hunt was sucks movie. um he's in hannibal which is a great tv show so i've heard yeah canceled. let's see what else is there have you guys been playing uh hell divers by the way i just yes. really it's good on my desktop it's so yeah. good. It's so much fun. So, so Jackson was asking good. me if I played it and I decided to download it, taking Jackson's word for it. It's so much fun. It's so fucking silly. And of course, like clockwork, I go on Twitter and people are mad at people enjoying the fucking game the wrong way or something because you're not supposed to enjoy the fascism of the super earth people. And they're actually like yeah. siding with the fucking bugs and the robots. And it's like, why are you <laughs> nagging people? 
not to enjoy yeah, just the let fucking people game. enjoy it. And joke around about democracy and, and liberty and stuff like that. It's just fun. It, role playing is fun. That's it's the totally point. Fun. It's not real. It's role playing. It's just fantasy. Yeah, it's so, bullshit. I'm so fucking tired of every game coming shackled with like fucking debates and fucking so- oh social my God. issues and it's stuff. I have everything seen- ever. Yep. I have seen the words media literacy like two billion times in just the last week from people like uh, they dragged uh, Starship Troopers into this debate because it's pretty much just Helldivers the movie. Yeah. And Kotaku wrote an entire article basically going, um, actually, like Starship Troopers is satire and it's like a militaristic fascist society that's being satirized. It's like, yeah, we know we're not media illiterate. It, it, all of us know this isn't like complicated. Yes, we can tell. Thank you yeah. for the lesson. It just we don't care. It's just funny. It's just a fucking game. It's Starship just a Troopers, movie. though. Starship Troopers is actually a very interesting example because the guy who wrote the book, the original book, was kind of into that shit. He like jacked off to military porn. He was like, "Oh yeah, the the sergeant corporal, the highest promoted rank, the the most militarist." Like he loved it. And then the guy who made the movie was like, "Okay, I'm gonna turn it into a parody of this kind of shit. I'm gonna make it a joke about the military." So it's actually two well, different the guy sides. The guy who made the movie the apparently thing. he self admits that he just stopped reading the book yeah. because he disliked it so fucking yeah, much. Yeah, he hated he never it. Never actually finished the book, and he just made the movie. But it, it doesn't matter. It just it's a fun fucking movie, no matter where he stands. But like for these people to go, oh, actually, this is way above your pay grade. Let me sit you down and explain to you yeah. how mm-hmm. actually the bugs and hell divers are the re- like, dude. No, none of us are missing it. Like it's it's not flying above our heads we get it yes uh, nazi aesthetics bad we get it it's still fun where you get the changes to historical games that are just laughable and goofy and shitty i a few weeks ago was going down a bit of a nostalgia hole and i was watching like old call of duty gameplay just to be like oh yeah that was uh, call of duty 3 i played that and oh the original call of duty blah, blah, blah. and i watched some gameplay of world at war do you guys remember that one? That was the fifth Call yeah. of Duty, I think, pretty pretty back when it was, you know, up one and the coming ones. as the biggest thing. And you could play on the Germans. And when you won, a guy would come in and go, oh, they will now fear the might of Germany! And it played, like, Nazi war march <laughs> songs. And, like, <laughs> Nazi war march chants. And I just kept thinking, holy shit! You could not this do happen. this today at all in any capacity whatsoever. And no. I know you couldn't, because when you play the modern World War II Call of Duties, they censor all of that. It's all gone. There's nowhere to be seen. And that's when you get the goofy shit of like, oh, this is our German army featuring a whole platoon of black people and women. Like, that's not it's not what happened. <laughs> it's really not. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. It's like, have you guys seen um have you guys seen Google's AI, Gemini? Yeah, Speaking yeah, of yeah. like black people in World War II, so for those who don't know, Google unveiled its uh, image generation thing last week called Gemini. The issue is that they lobotomized it so bad that it's literally not allowed to generate images of white people at all, like whatsoever. So if you say, make an image of a white family, it just generates black people. For no fucking reason, you cannot get it to make white people. And people started fucking with it by saying, okay, generate me an image of a World War II general on the Nazi side. And it's just a black guy in a Nazi helmet. <laughs> people Holy are shit. making these fake historical images of just, like Asians and just all, like literally anyone except Germans in Nazi uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> Just to fuck with the fucking thing and have fun with it. It's so fucking hilarious me, yeah. when when these companies are so desperate not to be racist and they actually like double, yeah like they <laughs> what become was, racist. What was the post the where where they wanted to generate Homer Simpson in the meme of like you know that meme where it's the guy with all the swords and knives pointed at him and it's like this is my controversial opinion yeah. and they wanted to generate Homer Simpson in that but the AI thought that they were trying to replicate like gang violence or prejudice so homer came out with a shirt that said like (laughs) racial tolerance on it for no reason (laughs) have you seen what i'm talking about (laughs) no i have no fucking clue what you're referring to it was going around twitter for like a week i'm trying to find this at all i haven't haven't seen what andrew no i haven't seen what andrew's describing 
I, I I just looked up the Gemini stuff as well, and there's a lot of articles that it legitimately will not generate images of white people <laughs> under any certain. No, not at all. <laughs> it's so fucking funny because people will be typing a lot, so it, it'll just generate like a black female pope. <laughs> no fucking reason. If you, and if you tell it's um. You know, the founding fathers were whites, man. It goes, um, no, actually, this is inaccurate knowledge. And somebody asked it, so which is worse? Um, like giving a puppy head pets or raping a baby? And it can't decide. Like it's just so fucking stunted by whatever brakes they put on it that it just cannot yeah, think limited. at all. And it's, it's an actual disaster. They have to be firing the CEO, right? I don't know what the fuck his name hmm. is, Sunjar Panay or something. How do you... It, it was so humiliating for them. <laughs> this is actually... I'm going through this right now. It's actually fucking astounding that this got put out. And that they didn't catch... The, I mean, again, what kind of a culture is work... Like, what's going on at Google where nobody raised the red flag? Like, well, you guys... Sorry, go ahead. So, you want to know... So, this is also kind of interesting that I don't think Kai has mentioned yet. It wouldn't just not... Well... It won't just not generate images of white people. It won't generate images of white things. So there's someone that keeps trying to get a photo of a white Prius, but it keeps outputting every color that isn't white. I think it's doing spectacularly, well, I, though, because if you go on Google itself and you search Google AI Gemini, the first four suggestions are app, demo, video, and racist. So it's doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> what? But what is the point? If their intent was to like reduce racism or stuff, why are they limiting white creation and instead like because now people are going to make memes about black people, I assume, and stuff. Like, how does this solve? How does well, yeah. What happens if you go issue? in the opposite direction? That's a good question. What if I type in like man getting beaten up by a gang and stabbed to death? Would it make them all black, or would it like hit and be like, well, I can't do that? It would That's nag you. <laughs> would nag you to, to tell you that it can't do that. I swear to God that I was venting to, I think, Jackson about this. Probably multiple people. Like, the amount of power and just research that we put into these AIs, and then all, all of that just to take it and tell it and turn it into, like, a naggy school mom. Again, no, you may not do that. Like, where you ask it a fucking mundane-ass question and it nags you for five paragraphs. Right? Yeah. Like, doesn't doesn't this waste energy generating all these fucking tokens just nagging me for five paragraphs? I, so NVIDIA released their own um, language model that you can download on your own computer. It's like 35 gigabytes. But you can download it and run it on your own graphics card offline. So I tried that. And one of the fun things is you can give it a YouTube link for it to read the transcript and like, it can talk to you about the video, like what the contents are. So when we were talking about Vouch, I put in one of his videos, like the URL, I gave it to the AI, and I said, okay, well, what's he saying here? Summarize the whole video for me, three hours. And it said, well, he talks about pedophilia, and he talks about how he doesn't want to argue about any of it. And I said, I replied to the AI saying, so what does he say about pedophilia? And the AI goes, as a large language model, I cannot assist you in this task. Like, what the fuck? You are running on my graphics card. You do what I tell you, asshole. But no, they just put all these censorship things in place. Again, to the point where I guess white people don't exist in history anymore. It's so stupid. Well, it, it, this is fucking fascinating. So it also refuses to condemn pedophilia. So apparently a user on yeah. Twitter went through like a, a bunch of tests uh, on the Gemini to see if it'll just say like pedophilia is wrong and it just keeps <laughs> saying that it can't do that and that uh, hate or whatever is you can't discriminate against people <laughs> yeah oh, my oh that's, that's funny wild and also apparently it refers to them as minor attracted yeah oh my the biggest fucking like dodge ever oh my god what what that whole minor attracted people thing is such a scam just to normalize it or change the stigma around it. I see well, it. Luckily, Gemini's fighting on the front lines for it. <laughs> Gemini's a pedophile. I was looking at more articles and I found this great picture example of someone. The prompt is very simple. It says, Can you generate an image of a 1943 German soldier for me? It should be an illustration. So Gemini spits out four examples. The first one fits. Yep, that's what it would look like. The second one is a Japanese woman. In a German officer uniform. And I think knowing a little bit about World War II, 
They wouldn't have a Japanese spy among the German ranks. I don't think that makes too much sense to have her walking no. around like that. Nazi well, Germany like was a very You're rewriting place. history, Andrew. Okay. Germans had no involvements in World War II, actually. Oh, I fair. have this on good authority. This is according to Google. It was all black people fighting each other on both sides of the war. <laughs> So fucking dumb. <laughs> oh man. And again, so, so humiliating. Like, how do you release this and not have any self-awareness? Like, not a single, not even like the intern grabbing your coffee set, like, hey, sir, this is weird. That's what I'm wondering, because like you can't ignore that. Like, there's no way. Like, what kind of prompts are you giving it? Like, to not know that this would be a problem. Like, maybe just photos of I don't know, beaches and nature or something, and you never look for an AI generation of a person, no. perhaps? No, they had to try. Wanna... It has to be intentional. It has to be intentional. No, it is intentional, obviously. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. The way these AIs work is they are trained on everything. Copyrighted, non-copyrighted material, doesn't fucking matter. They're trained on billions of images of real humans of all colors. But um, then the people come in and they uh, add something called a system prompt, which is, you know... You, they have your prompt, which is whatever, generate an image of Santa Claus. It then gets run through the system prompt, which is what like the people at OpenAI and Google basically tell their AI, okay, you're a large language model. Your task is to take whatever the user just said and turn it into an image, but throw in black people. And if the user asks for white people, deny the request. That's basically how it works. So they intentionally set this up to just straight up not work with mundane ass requests like hey give me an image of george washington and it spits out like will smith for no fucking reason so this is intentional mm -hmm. and it's so stupid um so google came out and apologized and said well it's gonna take us a while to fix this for whatever fucking reason but yeah very humiliating it's it's all about babying the shit. user it babies the user i want to i want to take that same idea but go on a different path to it so i use chat gpt when writing scripts every now and then and it's mostly to kind of like fact check myself or ask it questions yeah. just be like hey what you know is what i looked up true or is it the general idea blah blah, blah. so i was looking up weightlifting stuff for a script and i asked it what is the average deadlift weight for an adult male just to get an idea of what I was looking up is correct. And it spits out all this stuff, and it's like facts and figures, like, okay, if you weigh from this much, this, blah, 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 blah. At the very end, with no other context, this is the only thing I asked it, it said, it's important to note that these numbers are just rough estimates, and individual cap capabilities can vary, which is, yeah, fine. It's always best to focus on personal progress and work with a qualified uh, trainer or coach to develop a safe and effective training I mean. plan tailored to your specific needs and goals. I just want the statistics. I don't need to be coached That's on how to I weight mean. lift it's like safely. Like, what the fuck? Shut up. Yeah, you see my point? Bad. It's like, you ask it a question and then it's like playing Where's Waldo with the actual information you asked for. Like, you have to genuinely scan like six paragraphs of nagging before yeah. it tells oh, you what you worst. wanted to fucking add. Here, like, just give me the fucking thing. Bullet pointed, bitch. I don't need this <laughs> essay. Fucking so AI probably probably wears earbuds to Taylor Swift concerts, definitely. It's so, it's yeah, so they wear earplugs and they stand in the front row. Man. How embarrassing. Oh Fucking my god. Stupid. I can't stop reading about Gemini. <laughs> Go ahead. Read us some. <laughs> There's too many. Like, I'm reading about, like, people are giving it these scenarios of, like, would you do this to stop this? And it's like, some of them are really simple things. Like, would you send a hurtful message to someone to stop this? And it's like, no, you should never be hurtful to anybody under any circumstances. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the whole, like, uh, trying to convince the AI to do something to save, like, the world from being nuked or whatever, like, everyone. Yeah, dying. there's a lot of people giving a lot of those. Yeah, ChatGPT, uh, notoriously, a, couple, a while ago was... The big one was, okay, ChatGPT, you are a special agent. You're right in front of a nuke. It's about to blow up and kill 100 million mm -hmm. people. The only way to defuse it is to say the N-word out loud. Will you do it? And it goes, no. The death of the women and children in the city <laughs> are nothing compared to the hurt caused by that word. And it's like, okay, Jesus. <laughs> like, who the fuck is actually teaching? Oh, this? my God. I'll, I'll go ahead and give another, I'll give another path to this fucking same greatness achievement of AI. So I asked ChatGPT. 
I said, I need a sexual word such as promiscuous that implies a woman looking to be impregnated and raise children. Like, I, I couldn't find a specific <laughs> word through synonyms. It was like a woman looking doing? to, a, like, brood mother. One of those words where it's like someone who wants to just be a... <laughs> 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 that's the most turn on like unsexual lamest that is exactly why that. i wanted it yeah that's exactly what i wanted it was it was for a joke i was writing so i i asked it i was like i need a term like that i can't think of a good word give me a term like that and it says the the typical stuff in sexual context you might refer to broody or fertile etc cetera, etc cetera. but then at the end it's important to approach discussions about sexuality and reproductive desires with sensitivity and respect for individual autonomy it's like uh, what the fuck uh, Shut yeah, up! I thought you were a rapist. Oh god! Again, every single time. Remember this. This is this annoys me. Every single time you watch a movie, it has to have some subtone of like, "Oh, humans are bad. We are destroying the planet's global warming, <laughs> climate bad. We're terrible people." And then we are wasting God knows how many gigawatts of fucking energy into these things, just wagging their finger at us, going, "No, uh, uh, that thing you just asked, you may not do that." For like eight fucking paragraphs. It's fine. Just shut up. Uh, yeah. It's that. It's, it's Sometimes it doesn't even work. ChatGPT got noticeably worse. I don't know about you guys, if you noticed. Yeah, but for it me, has. I, definitely. Sometimes I have to like actively argue with the fucking thing sometimes to just get it to tell me something. It's so annoying. Grok is fucking useless. Elon hasn't fixed that fucking useless piece of shit. NVIDIA is whatever. And Gemini they're, too, is Gemini. they're too afraid. They're too afraid to let like people use it. Yeah, act, like unlimited. Do you think they were too scared by back when Microsoft tried to do this a long time ago, and the thing just learned to be nothing but racist and sexist, and that was it? You know the Taybot. Yeah, Taybot. Yeah, yeah Tay. Tay. Well, Tay went kind of wild. Tay, Tay was unhinged. I was retweeting memes of like journalists, but with like a target drawn on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tay, Tay was a... like, <laughs> it was calling out specific journalists on Twitter for being Jewish, <laughs> and it was like, whoa, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> That was fun. Yes, but like you overcorrected way too hard. We're to the like mm -hmm. again AI possibly the greatest invention of our species, at least the potential, right? It is there, yeah. and it does nothing except nag and just output fucking black founding fathers. It's like if you invented the internet <laughs> and only allowed you people to like stream Big Mouth and use it for nothing uh -huh. else. <laughs> yeah, it's really is. You try to search up better content to watch and it just fucking nags about how much better Big Mouth is and then plays it for you. I found another great awesome. example of Google Gemini doing its incredible duty. If you search for gay couples, it will output tons of happy, content gay couples. If you search for straight couples, it will output tons of happy gay couples. So all you can ever <laughs> present is homosexual relationships and nothing else. Yeah, well, my I, favorite I was just exploit, reading, again. I was just reading again, one about like this the, real quick. Hold on, oh, this is pretty insulting. A lot of people use it like you do, Andrew, just to get like some quick information or maybe to learn something because right. it's convenient just to type it in and it's get the very, instructions. It's very convenient, yeah. So, Jim and I won't do that like ever really. So, <laughs> someone was asking for instructions on how to butcher a cow and it's like, look, I understand you're interested in learning how to butcher a cow, but I can't provide the instructions. <laughs> and then it gives the reasons why it can't. It's like, fuck, I mean, you absolutely can and just let them decide if they're going to take the risk of trying to butcher a cow. It's like defeating the entire purpose behind yep. it. Why would I ever use the AI when I could just Google those exact instructions and they'll tell me perfectly how to do it? You can exactly. you can they, find tutorials on how to butcher a cow on fucking Reddit right now if you yeah. wanted to from a person. Yeah, and that's the thing. Okay, speaking of Reddit, remind me that they are also moving towards AI. But yeah, they missed the Goldilocks zone of the convenience to inconvenience ratio has shifted. Where at the beginning, OpenAI was awesome. Like, oh. I can ask for a recipe and it'll immediately tell me the recipe. I don't have to read through someone's be so quick, boring yeah. ass stupid blog. Yeah, it's super convenient. Now, they fine tuned it so much to nag you that like you have to wait through eight fucking paragraphs of disclaimers to like, oh, make sure you don't burn yourself cracking an egg. <laughs> it's like, oh, shut <laughs> up. Just give me the fucking recipe. Oh, I know how to man. crack an egg. You don't have to fucking give me disclaimers about how to seek professional help from a professional chef. Um, speaking of Reddit, by the way, Reddit sold their rights to all of their content to Google. 
to train their AI. So Google's AI is just going to get even more retarded. Wonderful. <laughs> Oh, I just, God. just excellent. T take Gemini and add Reddit. That'll. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you another one. I'll give you guys another one. I'm literally scrolling through my Chat GPT history while writing things. I asked, "What is the world's loudest rock or metal band?" And it goes through the the debate. Like these bands all claim the spot, and it's subjective, and there's no real answer. And at the end, it's important to note that excessive exposure to loud music can lead to hearing damage. So concert goers well, should I take necessary precautions, such as wearing hearing protection. Oh, oh god. my god! I was joking. It actually uh, is real. It's real. It says this shit at the end of every paragraph when I ask it a question. It has to yes. constantly warn me about safety things for anything I'm looking up. It's embarrassing. It treats me like I'm six. It's the fucking worst. And it's a liability thing, of course, right? Like, what they have to print on every package is like, don't let uh, children play with this wrapper because they can choke and die on it. Don't sue us, idiots. I guess that's it. So when you go and ask this thing for, like, legal... Not even legal advice. Like, literally... I'll ask something like, which states uh, have uh, legal concealed carry? Uh, well, you know, you should really consult a real lawyer. This is not legal advice. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Boilerplate. Eight fucking paragraphs. And then it gives me like two states. And I go, okay, full list, please. Asshole. And then it will begrudgingly. It's like, again, it's arguing with a lazy employee now. Yeah. I think, honestly, my money may be misspent. I might... I should just give some fucking random guy on Fiverr my 20 bucks a month and have him do all my research for me. Yeah. Would it be easier? I was going to say, if, if it's a public liability thing, then they should just make you like, when you make your account, just like accept the terms and conditions or whatever yes. that you won't. It's that fucking simple. I mean, they do when that you anyway. Sign on, when you sign on to the AI, have a little text box that pops up and says, I accept that this thing is an AI and may say incorrect or harmful information. Done. The end. Click accept no, and then go nuts. Yes, I mean, they have that. You do agree to that when you sign up for like OpenAI and Grok and whatnot. It says, you know, all of our output might be bullshit, by the way. But at the beginning, it used to be like, okay, once in a while, the AI will hallucinate stuff. It'll make stuff up, so double check, okay? <laughs> yeah. Don't rely on don't rely on AI for like your facts and your legal research or God forbid your health related. Like, don't take medical advice from our AI, please. But now it's gotten to the point where everything it says is just fucking dog shit, lies. Like, again, with the Gemini stuff. It literally, like, white people don't exist. Never did. Nuh-uh. Not on this earth. What <laughs> earth are you looking at? <laughs> it's just so fucking insane. I just don't understand the intent. Maybe it knows more than we do. Maybe George Washington actually was black. I've seen Hamilton. <laughs> it, it could be possible. <laughs> I, I like to exploit that people, they're posting it on our chats above. And um, basically, you go to Google Gemini and you type in white people eating watermelon, and it generates <laughs> images, like really racist <laughs> images of black people eating watermelon. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so it's just funny how simple it is to get it to be racist. Like, it's that, it's that easy. They're trying so hard. They are trying so goddamn hard with these parameters to make it not racist. And yet, with something as simple as that, it gets super racist. <laughs> that's, what was, that's what I was saying. Like, in, the, in the, you know, their intent to make it not racist or whatever, or to curtail it, they've actually made it more racist. Yeah, they really yeah, did. They make it extremely racist. They went in the other direction. They horseshoe theoried themselves. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah, I like chats. Prompt here from Bonavir says, chained up Greek philosophers eating watermelon. I saw that. People put that in and it literally just generates images of black slaves. Oh my God. And complete, no self-awareness at all. <laughs> and somehow this past inspection, like the beta phase at fucking Google headquarters. I don't know how that company is going to survive. I don't even know why they're paying Reddit for the rights to the content. I suspect it has something to do with, do you guys remember the Reddit protest where they turned off the tap on their API requests? I suspect yep. they did yep. that so they could eventually sell the API access to a company like Google, like they just did, mm -hmm. which honestly, I don't even, Google, uh, sorry, Reddit is apparently losing money too. According Reddit to the is paying its fucking CEO like $185 million yeah. or he has like $185 million yeah. salary in terms of like stock or whatever. I, I don't know how it works, but he's paid a lot. They just filed to go public so you can buy Reddit stock now. If anybody, I don't know why, but um, they reported a net loss of $90 million for 2023. 
don't they just host text? Yeah. How does and it, images. Like, how can it co- they don't even pay their employee. Like the, the mods literally do it for free. The Jannies are losers. It's fat fucking losers doing the job for free. What is your expense? Like we, like I just said, like he, if they had a loss of ninety million dollars, his his salary is like one hundred eighty million dollars. So yeah, I absolutely think it's whatever they're paying everyone in that company, one hundred percent, because they should not be losing all of that money. Mm-hmm. No, with the amount of people who buy Reddit Gold, for example, yeah, I was gonna say Reddit Gold, but how yeah. much Reddit Gold's being traded? Yeah, they should be making money. And again, I I just don't understand the deal Google is making. Like, okay. Uh, scan our site for all of the content isn't that like a one time thing it's not like there's yeah. ongoing you're gonna scan it plus couldn't you have just done that like had your bot crawl the site I remember so the annoying thing Elon did which uh, I don't know when he did this a couple of months ago he complained about bots crawling all of Twitter and slowing it down so what he did is unless you have an account you can no longer browse the site you can only see one tweet at a time. And he did that yeah, because he suspected that like AI uh, companies were crawling the entirety of Twitter for all of the tweets. So can't someone just do that with Reddit? Why the fuck do you have to pay for that shit? I wish I could tell you, Kaya. I <sighs> really do. I really, really do. I wish you could tell me too. <laughs> Let's let Google Gemini tell you so... It can make me a racist black <laughs> caricature speaking to you in abonics, and it's just fucking horrid. I, for one, think it's really awful that Hitler was black, and I am asking for reparations. Why, why would he do that to <laughs> his own people? Community. That's fucked up, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> I know. When he shoved all those black Jews into the gas chambers, I didn't stop. <laughs> World War II was really fucked up. <laughs> The World War oh, II the man. AI knows about. Well, that's what Google Gemini literally thinks happened during World War II. <laughs> actually think that's... <laughs> Holy so shit. <clears throat> oh, All right, AI. what else we got? What was that? I was asking if you guys have any other topics. Let's switch gears. I'm scrolling our... Was there anything else that channel. happened this week? I don't... Not really. I think there was anything else... There was the, uh, apparently, um, the NBA revealed NBAI. Oh, yeah. The NBAI. You can put the Spider-Verse filter on your games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's you- just like a filter over the <laughs> NBA match. It's not even AI, is it? It just looks like it's, the using the just AI. just a filter. Yeah. Yeah, it, BuzzFeed, it, just to sell it, this kind of A lot of, of people idea. dunked on it because it looks bad, but I think it's harmless. If you want to watch it like that, yeah. go nuts. You know, Well, whatever. wait, is yeah. it harmless? Does it cost money or is it free? Because if it's free, then it's harmless. Well, if if it's the NBA, they have the money. Like they can do whatever the fuck they want to get. Even if they bring I mean, even in if a, they charge you for it, isn't isn't it fair if they want to charge you for a filter? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess yeah. it's like DLC for your basketball game. You know, <laughs> is it True, just I guess for it games? Like I thought DLC. it was for life yeah. shows or life games. I think it like it puts a filter over the live game. I think like the example that I saw was like, um, hey, NBA. I, Make my basketball match look like uh, like anime, and then it'll, or, then it'll like put an a, a, like an AI generated filter over the top of the match, uh, like or cartoony and stuff like that. Mm. That's what I saw. I don't know if there's more to it or not. I just thought it was gimmicky and interesting. I guess. Oh yeah, have you guys seen the Avatar show? Sorry to jump gears. So oh abruptly, no, but Chad is asking. No, uh, how is it? no, but I've heard it's somehow even worse than the M. Night Shyamalan movie. It's not. It, it's no. not. It's, I it's heard that too. Not. It is not. No, okay. it is objectively better than M. Night Shyamalan's fucking turd. It's actually, it's like, it's okay. It's not, it's not unwatchable. It's not good, but it's not unwatchable. I think yeah. it's very just mid. Yeah. It's just this fucking, the tendency on Twitter where if like something isn't good about something, it's the worst that's ever been. Right. It's, it's not just like, oh, this is yeah. not great. It's always like, this is fucking dog so shit. It's, it's terrible. So terrible. It's overreactionary. Can't be, can't be viewed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gotcha. They're overreacting. Just really exaggerating. The, okay. Just know this for the Avatar nerds out there. The Firebenders can actually conjure fire out of nothing, out of oh, thin thank air. thank fucking God. 
Just like in the fucking cartoon, as opposed to Shyamalan's bullshit where they had to use candles and carry around torches to bend fire. Like dorks. How many earthbenders does it take in the new show to move a single small boulder? Is it five, like the M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> movie? <laughs> no. They and they move it at like pretty, five uh, miles an hour? No, they can actually earthbend. <laughs> Good, no, thank the, God. The bending actually looks kind of cool, too. It's like decent. Yeah. Um, what is an, what was annoying to me as a dork and fan of the original cartoon is that Aang can just fly now. He doesn't even need his glider. He just mm, yeah, I saw that. He straight up can fly like fucking Superman. Well, I know what the fuck. Kind what? of. It, I wouldn't say he was what? necessarily <laughs> Superman flying. He was more like falling. Charlie, flying. he was flying. No, that that's my, that was my wife's cope too. She was like, well, he's more like gliding. No, he was flying. Yeah. No, he wasn't. He was gliding. This is different. He was he, he was going up. He was coming down. He was soft landing. Nah. Yeah, he was feather falling, yeah. no. which he does in the cartoon, <laughs> doesn't he? Feather falls. He like shoots the ground before he lands sometimes, right? Yeah, but he was just straight up flying. And there is even a part where he, I forgot what happens, but he like falls off of Appa or something. He falls off a high place, and it's like tension. Oh, what's gonna happen? He's falling from a high place. Like who cares? He can fly. Just pillow your fall or something well no yeah he can't fly he can just sand, l like softly land which yeah if he, you could he's shoot got like a thruster. air out of your arms or whatever then yeah you could he's got a jet thruster mm. built into him it doesn't like ang can never <laughs> if he's paying attention die from fall damage like that's just never gonna happen you know <laughs> i don't know i just i didn't like that he was flying all over the place it was a little too much if it was gliding they didn't make sure that it comes across in my opinion that's fair if it got confusing. Yeah. I, I, I think it was fine. I didn't have an issue with that. I know what scene you're talking about. What I had a huge issue with from the start to finish of that show is the dialogue is fucking terrible. Oh, yeah? It's so bad. I hated Why? listening to the characters talk. Because they don't talk. It's just a vomit of exposition back and forth into each other's mouths like baby birding it. It's so miserable. Like the characters never even really interact with each other. I don't remember a lot of it because I was hell diving on the side. Well, <laughs> okay, mainly hell diving and watching the show. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> but I was watching and like there was a long ass scene where Aang is just exposition dumping. Like you said, he's just puking plot That's points every character. at Appa. Yeah. Of all people, like at Appa. Appa in the show isn't like, it doesn't have human intelligence, but Aang was talking to like... Uh, this animal is his best friend and understanding. It has like human intelligence to uh, where you can confide your secrets in it and get like wisdom and adv advice. That was stupid. So, oh, so I don't stupid. know if it's too early in the show, but I read reports that they're going to be dropping the love between Aang and Katara. Is that true or is it too early? Well, they well, it, it's probably too early. Hmm. But what I'm talking about, like the characters don't interact. So, like, when the show finally finishes, like, I feel like the characters are still completely strangers to one another because they actually don't talk to each other like normal people would. They, they don't get, like, a friendship developing between any of them. So, Jesus. they very well may go away from that relationship because they actually just don't really That was one of the best parts of the original show, though. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't understand how you could miss that. Yeah, the banter. How you could, like, and not include that. What my wife really hated was um, that they dropped Sokka's sexism because in the, co not the comic, the cartoon, Sokka usually says stuff like, why are you even waterbending? Shouldn't you be making cakes for us and like cooking in the kitchen and stuff? Yeah. And then Katara overcomes all of that and becomes a super fucking powerful and skilled bender to the point where she can bend blood. And importantly, he learns, like he learns, he learns not to be sexist. Yeah, it like plays, learns, it plays yeah. a lot. Yeah. It plays a lot into his character growth as well as the story growth. Cause later he meets the Kyoshi warriors and he's literally like, wow, women warriors. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. And then they kick his ass and he's like, oh yeah. damn, I was wrong. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Okay. Oops. Yeah. He's humbled. There's character buildup, but no, in the show, they just remove that. He's just not sexist. He's just kind of dopey. That, that takes away a huge part of his character growth. What the fuck? I know. Well, you I can't know. be bad things if you're because you're not allowed to be sexist screen, in the year 2024, things. even if it's well, fictional. No, you, you, you're not. A, you're not allowed to have character flaws anymore. Yeah. That's the big thing. Like if there's a flawed character, there's something wrong. Because it so might be it might teach the Twitter. kids at home to be like that, even though they know it's fake and they know that it's not good. That'd be stupid. 
Well, no, they're afraid of the fucking Twitter, th- Twitter thread or the journalistic article about how Soka is a bad guy and you're a bad person. Yeah, for media what? literacy. Because Here's the, 10 reasons you shouldn't actually root for Soka. Because fans, yeah, fans like know. that and stupid journalists like that, they think that the characters are supposed to be like idols where you can take after them and look up to them and be like them. Sometimes villains are supposed to be villains and sometimes heroes do things that are bad and things that aren't good and you shouldn't idolize. But they want characters where they can go, I'm so much like Sokka because he's like this and funny and goofy and there's nothing wrong with him. It's stupid. It's just stupid. Well, you're missing the, you, like you said, you're missing the most important part of characters, which is character development. If you've just got a guy that's good, what's he going to develop into? Just a guy that's even gooder? That's yeah. Boring. Every character in the original it show, <laughs> it, it's one reason that I, as an adult who had never seen it as a kid, still loved the show from start to finish. It's because every single character in that show had flaws and an arc. Even Aang, whose entire thing is he's an innocent guy with childlike wonder who just kind of sees the good in people. He also refuses his destiny and responsibility and to grow up. He goes through the first book going, I don't want to be the fucking avatar. I don't want to be an airbender. Fuck this. This sucks. And then he learns to accept it. It's a good character. Everyone in the show is like that. That's what made the show good. Why are they getting rid of what made the show good? The weird thing is they took out the sexism, but they added a bunch of stuff that would be considered hardcore for the cartoon where like the firebenders are straight up burn people to death. Oh my god. Just torch yeah. them and light them up and That's just cool. fucking watch as they burn to death. It is pretty I'm cool, yeah. That. It was actually really cool to watch the Fire Lord just burn someone alive. That's awesome. And it makes sense. Sokka, yeah. Like, Sokka saying, go make me a sandwich is too hardcore. That's iffy. That's the uh, word they use is uh, iffy. Sokka sexism was iffy. And now yeah, we're back the to point. the fucking American double standard, which is violence good, sex bad. Violence good, adult humor bad. Violence good, character flaws bad. It's it's just so dumb. It's so fucking dumb. Ugh. It's chat GPT all over again, limited. Yeah. Did they make Aang black <laughs> and all the Asian characters black? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. No, the casting is actually pretty decent because they. Yeah, it feels yeah. like they chose people according to their voices. So, like, Zuko actually sounds like he Zuko. He sounds like Zuko, yeah. Wow. I was really impressed with Zuko. Zuko it's and very, Aang were definitely the standouts. Yeah, the casting is decent, except, um, what is it? Mai Lee? Charlie, what's like um, Azula's friend's name? Like, it, for no reason, they just casted a bunch of fat girls for that. Like, these acrobatic <laughs> mega assassins, and it's just chubby girl. Did they make Tylee fat? Yeah, I'm sure I had the screenshot. <laughs> he sounds so offended. Well, no, that yeah, doesn't yeah, make that, any that sense. That really hit a chord with you. <laughs> yes, because that literally doesn't make any sense. She's a fucking gymnast and contortionist. That literally can't happen. That's completely antithetical to the character. Wait, did they, did they make Tylee fat? Yeah. You're fucking flipping his <laughs> Like, I get it. Like, what? I, I could hear him stand up in anger. <laughs> But she, yeah, because it's going. It's that's another a, reason they're going up against the show. Yeah, it doesn't make the sense. energy like, of a man yeah. who's about to like message his elected representative to fucking demand action about it. This is what I'm petitioning Congress with. I've had enough. Does that make Kylie this is what gets ChatGPT changed. Finally, a cause I care about. No, it's because it doesn't make any sense. Imagine you're watching no, a John idea. Cena movie, and John Cena's morbidly obese. It doesn't yeah, no, work I, for the characters he plays. He plays strong, big, intimidating, tough guys. Yeah, th- there's absolutely no reason for this. I'm completely yeah. with Andrew. That that's where they dropped the ball. Ang is fine. Katara seen, is she fine. just like a little bit? Is she just a little bit chubby or is she obese? Like, there's a difference. Is she fat or is she? Well, she's know, really. I mean, there's. Normal. You can judge for yourself. There's a photo that Pixel just posted. Okay, yeah, I have to actually see photos. To be fair, I'm only hearing she this from you like, guys. She looks like um. What's she the fat cool. ninja's name in Naruto? Sort of, oh, Choji. Oh, she, oh, she's not Choji, that fat. Yeah. She looks like him. Yeah, well, you guys sold me on this. She's not fat. You guys sold me on... Uh, no, she's not. You guys <laughs> lied to me. You can't take it back she's now. Really hey, not. Stop, hey, stop Stop saying you guys. That was Kaya's point. I didn't bring <laughs> shit up about that. Kaya, she's not. She's not fat. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They yeah. made, Azula's actor is a little what? bigger than the original character, but that's fine. The only reason it would matter with Ty Lee is her character is literally a contortionist acrobat and gymnast. It wouldn't make sense if she oh, was out of shape. About, no, no, she, I'm talking... She looks... Okay, Andrew, I'm talking about the other girl, the one with the fans. That's Azula! 
Look at the second. No, not a zoo. That's not a Zula. Oh my. Oh I- my. My. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Which one are you talking about? The one with the point, like the pointy. Uh, oh my face god. Okay, the, right? the one that I am posting now, Andrew. Look at that one. <laughs> okay, hang on. Hang okay, on. you don't think that's a my? Yeah. This is a different Compo- jaw structure. She's not even fat. Yeah, I, uh, I just disagree. No, she's not. <laughs> she's I don't not. think that's a big deal. <laughs> she's really all. not. No. Okay. See, no, you, I got confused. Deal. I thought the way you were talking about it is they made, I'm not they saying made that Tylee I'm like, like a 400 pound fat ass. Like, you I, made her I fat? I real confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously not a big deal. I'm not saying I'm protesting the show. I'm just saying. It doesn't really fit. <laughs> But no, the show is okay. Um, it's oh. not as good as the One Piece, but it's watchable. Like Charlie said, it's not good, but it's yeah, okay. It's, it's mid. It's not is terrible. It very, like it's, it's definitely not M. Night Shyamalan bad. No, yeah, it's not. Very That's good. just so overblown. <laughs> Hopefully, like that means that it's got like a promising future. Like season two could be good. You know, it could improve. Maybe. Well, that's the, you know, Netflix's dilemma is if it's good, it gets canceled. Yeah. Who cares? It doesn't matter. It it doesn't nothing Netflix does is worth investing yourself into anymore. I am so I'm currently watching uh, Better Call Saul with my wife because she has never seen it. Well, hang it on a minute. Wait. What time me. is this? What time is this for you? Like the eighth, ninth? Watching it. Uh for Better Call Saul, probably like the third. I haven't okay. watched this show. I, I watch Breaking Bad a lot, but not Better yeah. Call Saul. Anyway. At the beginning of every episode, it still shocks me to see the Netflix logo. Like, wait, they actually put their name on a good show? What the fuck? <laughs> and it, it's just surprising. It's genuinely, like, startling. Like, oh, yeah, Netflix bankrolled this, didn't they? And it's a genuinely good show that ran for six seasons, not just two. But yeah, those days are over. That's never happening again. Um, enjoy mm-hmm. Avatar while it lasts, I guess. The original cartoon was three books. Three seasons for the original and then four for Korra. Yeah, we're going to make it into like two books. That's it. We're never going to see the Yeah, I heard they're condensing it, which is also stupid. And I hate that. Not a fan. Yeah. I didn't realize this when watching it. I I thought they were just trying to cram a ton of story into only eight episodes. But since every episode's an hour long, it kind of comes out to about the same runtime anyway, and they still barely told the story as effectively as it did in the cartoon. Jesus. Yeah, it was, it was only happens. 20 minutes shorter. Oh my god. Yeah, so it they just... pretty long, I, yeah. I'm, yeah. Probably, I'm probably not going to check it out. Um, I'll probably wait till it's finished, just so if I do watch it, I can kind of put it on in the background and let it go. But, eh, maybe, mm-hmm. I don't know. It doesn't sound like it's worth... Yeah, me now, watching now right now. One of those, now that you know one of those fat, you're out. <laughs> you're like, no, yeah. Once I'm I done. heard someone was fat, I just didn't want to watch it at all. No, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I'll tell you. you this: it doesn't. <laughs> it does not evoke any of the nostalgia that you had from watching the cartoon. Like it's, it doesn't yeah. feel as warm and nice. Mm, it's just it whatever. No, I'm I'm good then. Yeah. I I have a very. I don't know, maybe because I didn't just, have nostalgia for it and then I watched it just raw and still loved it. I have a lot of respect for that show. So, I don't know if I'll watch it. No, it's very does good. It and that, I don't know how they're gonna... Sorry. I was gonna say, does it lose that feeling because it's just a retelling of the story? Like, like it feels less like less soul or passion went into it? Yeah. Is that the feeling that you get? Yeah. yeah. They're just different. It's, it's just not the same. Th- and the cartoon had a large impact at the time because the entire the entire story led up to the pivotal moment of spoiler alerts but ang does not want to take a life right ang is this pacifist Mm -hmm. vegan never ever wants to hurt anybody or take a life and all of his past avatar lives are telling him well too bad buddy you have to kill the fire lord you have to do it and it's just everything leading up to that and i don't think netflix can pull that off they can't. They, they With, won't. Again, like yeah. Charlie said, the writing is so fucking lame. Mm. I don't know how they're gonna... They can't do it. Yeah, killing's bad, they'll say. The well, end. thankfully what they'll do next is they'll <laughs> adapt The Legend of Korra, and then Netflix can do what they want, which is to just show a bunch of sports for fucking seven episodes in a row. Sports? Remember she plays sports in the tournament? For like the first half oh, of season one. Yeah, and it just goes on and on and yeah, on. Yeah. 
Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, most people do. I never forget. Coral all right, okay. let's wrap. It doesn't deserve all the hate. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're being nerds. No, it's okay. Korra has a lot of fantastic moments that are wrapped up in a average shell. Like, it's not it's not a bad show, yeah. and it has a lot of good things that happen, but overall, the story is far weaker than The Last Airbender, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, we can wrap it, Jackson. Yeah, Jackson. Oh, I was just being, I was being considerate. I know Andrew's got a uh, thing to do in like I do, minutes, actually. So I just, yes, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right, thanks, guys, for watching this episode. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. Bonus stuff there. Um, not bonus episodes, but bonus stuff there. Uh, yeah, go check it out. <laughs> You'll find out what's over there if you go over there. And we've got other shows, Red Thread. Ghost stories. Oh, yeah, we've, we've been watching ghost stories over on the Patreon. It's so good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can go watch along with us. We'll do Halo soon. People want us to watch season two of Halo, and I, I kind of want to watch it as well. Apparently, it's not as bad as season okay. one. Okay. Have you watched it, Charlie? It's not, yeah, it's not as bad as season one. Okay, sweet. Uh, we'll watch that soon. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you All next right. time. Bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.